Welcome to Out of the Box with Christine, the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. Are you willing to step into your greatness? Are you ready to shine? Well, get ready, Truth Seeker. You're in for an amazing ride. And now, here's the host of the show, Christine Blasdale. Welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine, the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. I'm Christine Blasdell, your host. And today, buckle up, honey buns, because today we have a very action-packed show with a dear friend of mine. I, I, I consider this gentleman family. This is how close I am to my guest today. Uh, Craig Doeswalt is a keynote speaker of epic proportions. I've seen him in action, so I know this. He is a best-selling author, podcaster himself, and the creator of the brands Rockstar Marketing and Rock Your Life. Craig has written 10 books and is a number one best-selling author in so many different genres. His background, we're going to talk a little bit about that because for those of you who don't know uh, where, where Craig came up in through the world, you're going to get uh, an earful. He actually uh, was touring with Guns N' Roses as Axl Rose's personal assistant and then uh, with Air Supply as well. Thus the, thus the branding of Rock Your Life, right? And Rockstar Marketing. It's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant, it's a brilliant concept. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Craig Doeswalt, my dear friend. It's good to have you back, mate. Uh, Christine Blasdell in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I miss you so much. You're one of my favorite people. And I'm so glad to be back on with you. It's 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 been a while. It's been a while, but um it has been a while. Family, you stick together over the COVID times. And with moving and everything, because I thought you were the Los Angeles man. I thought you were (laughs) the the LA dude. I was. And now (laughs) where are you? Where are you at? I'm in North Dallas, Texas. Texas. I've gone to Texas. And you know, you know, what's really funny. Most people think, oh God, Texas, cowboys and all that stuff. Uh, you know, not diverse. It is the most diverse place personally I've ever lived. I honestly, it is such a great place and everyone's nice. Southern hospitality is here in Dallas, Texas. It really, really is. Yeah, there is that Southern hospital. And it's, it's, it's a tad more affordable than, than Los Angeles, would you say? <laughs> yeah. I could have bought, let me see, one, two, three and a half of the houses that I live in right now for what I paid in LA. And I live on a golf course that the oh, LP you love that. golfers play on my golf course every year, a big tournament. So it's a nice place. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And I'm in Australia now. Yeah. A little California kid who... Yeah. who Fell in love with You're me. a little further away from LA than I am. I'm a seven thousand miles away. <laughs> but the yeah, beauty, that's... look at the beauty of technology, right? I mean, yeah. I I'm so um, and I'm so blessed and happy to have this podcast because I've had guests from all over the world, and yeah. we're able to bring these brilliant minds to the listeners of the podcast and to the viewers on the YouTube channel and now um, uh, and Pacifica radio. So people driving in their cars, stuck in traffic, they get to also uh, hear these wonderful, you know, beautiful um, people that, that inspire me. And so I'm just sharing you with the world. And you know, what's great too, there, that this is, I will say, this is the good thing that came out of COVID that we yes. are very attuned now to working on Zoom and StreamYard and all these things so that we can connect to people that live you know, 8,000 miles away because I'm in <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> well, you know, another a, a, a thing about COVID was, I mean, myself, I was actually really busy because my business of uh, coaching people, uh, t- teaching them how to create a podcast or do multimedia, you know, videos and branding and things like that. Yeah. I, it was great because I was already used to doing that on, on Zoom anyway. I don't go to people's houses. No. So, so I was, so I was fine with that, but, um, but I, I noticed something um, and, and you, I know you've seen this happening in the last few years, even pre COVID, but did you notice this explosion of entrepreneurship? Oh, where yes. People, because they didn't yeah. have that job. They, they either got, they either got let go or yeah. their hours were reduced greatly. Um, and that insecurity of not knowing where that, you know, where the, where they were going to pay their bills. There was an explosion of creativity and entrepreneurship 
that I know you were, you witnessed as well. Cause yeah, and, and remember when, when we grow up, our parents were like, you got to get a job and then you retire in 35 years and you get a pen set, you know, and that, and the, that's the goal of life, get a job, retire at 60 years old and they give you a retirement party and then you enjoy the rest of your life. Well, those days were over a long time ago, but now, like you just said there, oh my gosh, my business is going through the roof because I help entrepreneurs become rock stars in their business. And like you just said, <laughs> there's no security. There's more security now being an entrepreneur than there is at getting a job because you control it. You Absolutely. control everything. If you want to work that day, you work. If you don't want to work, you want to play golf, go play golf. But you know, in the corporate world, that's over. Now, granted, the corporate world is letting people work out of their houses, but that's also giving time for people to sit at their house going, you know what? <laughs> yeah. right? there's some other things that I could be doing right now, making money on the side or something. I didn't like sitting next to Karen anyway. Right? <laughs> exactly. I get to go. be in my jammies. This is, that's, that's a funny right. thing. I was just saying last night, I was at a networking event and we were talking about, <laughs> we were talking about COVID and Zoom and, and having all of our meetings and things on Zoom. And um, I said, and we were just talking about how, we are all dressed really well from like the chest up, right? Yeah, you don't want to see what's down there now. <laughs> you don't. I mean, you know, I was always very casually dressed when I would work at the radio station in the studio because yeah. nobody could see me. But he, now yeah. we're now I'm doing videos for YouTube. So from the chest up, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, she's nice shirt. Oh, that's a cool little necklace. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But below people don't know I could be I'm wearing anything. Sweats. Or nothing. Specs. Yes. Or nothing. <laughs> I'm wearing these horrible wearing slides. Socks. I'm wearing these. I'm wearing these horrible slides with socks. I look <laughs> like. I think the the character my friend my dear friend Ed Asner played in Up. Oh. I think I think I'm becoming that guy. The old yes. man. Yes, love that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm starting to look like him a little bit. <laughs> no, <you're not>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anywho, let's That's talk about. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about. Um, well, you're, ex I mean, you are the guy to go to when it comes to someone who has a business, a service, if they're a coach or a consultant and they need to, they need to let the world know who they are and what they do. And, um, I just think like, if you want to drop some wisdom, you know, drops of wisdom throughout this, this show. I would really love that. But let's start with with you. Like, how did you get started in this particular business? Because I know you had some unusual, a little bit of unusual background. Just a little. <laughs> Working in the rock and roll world. But but tell us yeah. a little bit about how you became yeah. this, really this master teacher in marketing well, and branding. You. Yeah. So it's really funny. And I'm going to, uh, I'll go back to that in a second. But um, I'm back in the music industry again. Uh, because my sons are all musicians, my three boys, 22, 20, and 18. They're all musicians. And the middle son is in a band called Thredge. And they're a heavy metal band. In fact, we're playing the whiskey again on Sunset Boulevard. So I'm going back to California. But it's so funny. I never, ever, ever, ever burned a bridge in the music industry. And I could have burned some bridges touring with Guns N' Roses and Air Supply, but I never did. And I always uh, kept in touch with everybody. And now I'm using all these connections again for my son's band. So I'm managing my son's band Thredge, which is a whole other story. But back to that. Um, I graduated college in 1983 and I uh, got a job at Westbury Music Fair in Long Island, New York as a runner backstage because I wanted to be an actor. I went to school for business. I, was, I got a marketing degree, but a theater minor. Wanted to be an actor. So I got a job at a theater figuring if I'm in the arena of where these actors and musicians are, something might happen. I literally worked there two weeks and Air Supply comes and does a show, a Friday and Saturday night. Friday night, I worked the show as the runner backstage, getting them drinks, getting the band towels, making sure they're happy backstage. I was like the runner, the lowest man on the totem pole. And um, so I worked the show Friday night. Saturday night, I'm not scheduled to work, but my mother wants me to take her to go see Air Supply. And so I'm like, great, two weeks out of college, I'm taking my mother to a concert. So now my dating life is over. So that's good. And uh, go to the show. And during the show, she says to me, hey, you work here. You could get me backstage. I'd like to meet the band. 
So I'm figuring, great, my mother's a groupie. This is not making sense right now. Everything that I thought my mother was is not making sense at all. So I go backstage, I introduce it to the band of only met them yesterday. And this big security guard that works for Air Supply comes up to me and he says, you were the guy that was working here last night. Uh, and I said, yes, I am, Mr. Very Large Man. And he says, how much do you make a week here? And I think it's none of his business, but he's huge. So I answered the question. I said about $150 a week. And he says, how would you like to quadruple that? And so many things went through my mind of what this man wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. $600 a week. Okay, what like, do I have I'm to in. do? <laughs> what, do you, what do you need? I'll do it. And he said, the band saw you working last night. They loved your positive attitude and your energy. They want to know if you want to go on the road. You leave tomorrow morning. They sent the limousine to my house, took me to JFK Airport, New York. I got on a Learjet and I met them in Wallingford, Connecticut. And I toured with Air Supply for seven years, simply because I always say in marketing, this is my best marketing tip, always do your best just in case someone's watching. It's not a great marketing tip, but it really, really is. Because if you walk around in life and everything is horrible, life sucks, a woe is me, no one's going to want to partner with you or work with you. So just like have high energy, just be on as much as you can and good things happen. So that's how I got my break in the industry. It's a great life tip. It's a, yeah. it, is a, it is a great life tip. And that's one of my, that's one of my mantras as well. Even mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever it is, even if it's something that you go, oh, I'm dreading doing this. Yep, when you yep. put a spin on it, like, you know what, let's let's see what can happen from it. I remember right. I was um, well, you were like a PA, right? Or, you know, yep. uh, right. Yep. I was a PA, a production assistant in Los Angeles when on I was when I was young for the for um, for a film company. They, they did oh. commercials and things like that. And um, and a production assistant and. And boy, we we had the worst job. We did. We yeah. were the lowest on the totem pole. Yep. And I always what I thought was funny was that even though we were paid the least and we worked like really ridiculous hours at the end of the day in my little old Volkswagen bug that like I didn't even know how it drove. Um, they would hand me the sound, the the the, the sound, whatever footage, and the footage of the day that they shot. Oh my now, God. If you know, you know, in television and film, the 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 footage it costs a lot per per second, right? Because of all the stuff you have to have, all the crew, all the lighting, all the union, all the union stuff. Yeah. So they would give this little seventeen year old, eighteen year old kid the master, got, the master. <laughs> of the day he's shooting <laughs> and they said you got to get it to kodak you know and you got to drop it off to this to technicolor or whatever uh-huh yeah. and i i'd be driving it and it's it's literally four or five o'clock in the morning and and i'm driving with this thing and inside of my head i'm saying christine this is good you it'll all pay off one day it'll all pay off one day <laughs> and um i didn't get a i didn't get a job working for a major film company or anything like that but it actually taught me um, at a really young age that there are some things, you know, there's some things that you do that are not the most pleasant maybe, but it mm -hmm. teaches you resilience because yeah. I had to figure out, and this was before, you know, Google maps. Yeah. You had to use Thomas, Mo the, Thomas I had to guide. Use the Thomas guide. <laughs> right. For those of you who are younger folk, the Thomas <laughs> guide was our, we'd have it in the car and it would always have like Coke and, and, and coffee. Oh, yeah. and it, oh, it was, yeah. it was disgusting. Cause you'd have it in your car forever and you had to look up the street address on there and, and look the page. Oh my God, it was a nightmare. But, um, and the page would always connect to the next page. <laughs> you had to figure out the connection of the page. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. I don't know um, how we survived. I don't either. I told my did. kids that they're like, that's not true. Dad. I'm like, yeah. it's true. I swear it's true. Swear. But yeah, it, it teaches you that, that, that perseverance and that resilience, which I think is so yeah. important to, to people. Um, so then how did you get, how did you get hooked okay, up so with then I toured Axel with Rose? Rose. Yeah, seven years. And uh, during like about year four, year five with Air Supply, this guy, Doug Goldstein, uh, get, uh, is now the new security guy for Air Supply. They found him in Arizona and he used to run a security company in Arizona at big venues. So Doug joins our tour and I toured with Doug for three years. And then at the end of my seventh year, Doug's third year, 
Um, I go back to New York because I'm from Long Island, New York, and Doug goes back to LA. And to make a very long story short, um, he was asked to watch Van Halen. Like a friend, uh, our tour manager was tour manager for Van Halen as well. So the tour manager said, hey, Doug, can you watch Van Halen for a little while uh, while I go in this other tour? And Doug says, yes. Through Van Halen, he met Guns N' Roses when they were still on the Sunset Strip um, about to release their big album, Appetite for Destruction, their debut album. So Doug just made friends with Axl Rose, just like hit it off and Axl hires Doug Goldstein, a security guard guy, to be the manager of Guns N' Roses. Total fluke, total, they weren't anything at the time. They, were, they had an album coming out. Everyone thought it would be good, but Doug got the job and, um, and he made uh, a lot of the success that Guns N' Roses has uh, had at the time and still has was because of Doug Goldstein. He was amazing. So then about a year or two later, they're about to start the Use Your Illusion world tour, which I think to this day is still one of the biggest world tours in the history of rock and roll. It was a three and a half year tour. And Doug calls me up and he goes, are you ready to go back on the road? I'm like, not really. Uh, I'm just done with this. I did seven years. And he, I said, what do I have to do? And he basically, you have to watch Axl Rose. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that, that, sounds, that sounds difficult from what I've heard in the news. And he said, yeah, but I'm going to pay you a lot of money. I said, okay, I'm in. Okay, okay. So I'm like, all right, I'll do that. So yeah, I literally, um, I met Axel one day. The first thing I had to do, I drove to Axel Rose's house in the uh, Hollywood Hills. And um, um, I get a call from um, the manager, of Doug. And he says, hey, can you do me a favor? Just go down the hill and pick Slash up at the Oakwood Apartments. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be cool. So I drive my little Chevy Citation car <laughs> to the Oakwood Apartments and Slash is standing there with his top hat and his leather jacket in the parking lot. Of course, I recognize him. I just pull up to him without any question. He just gets in my car as if like he knew that I was going to go pick him up. And he said, hey, I'm Slash. I said, hey, I'm Craig. And he goes, you're the new guy, right? And I said, yeah, I'm working with Axel. He goes, welcome. And that was it. And then I went back to the house and uh, met Axel. And the rest, as they say, is history. I toured with them for four years almost uh, during the Usual Illusion World Tour and about six to eight months after that as well. So I did that for, like I said, it was great. It was, I wouldn't replay, replace those years for anything. It was great. Axel was a great, great, great boss. He was great to his team. Now when he gets in public, he gets in trouble sometimes. But to his team very loving and caring person, just, and everyone in the band, great, great guys. So I did that. And then after I opened up an ad agency, because I said, all right, I'm not touring anymore. I'm kind of sick and tired of being on the road, living out of suitcases. I'm going to, and I got married to my wife, Natasha, who I met during the tour. She was not a groupie, just, just in case everyone's wondering. I met her through my sister. Um, so anyway, so I, I finished uh, the tour. I get married and I decide I'm going to get a job. So I get a job at an advertising agency because I want to use my marketing degree again. And then I went to a Tony Robbins seminar and he, <laughs> convinced me, yeah, he convinced me to quit my job and start my own ad agency just through going to a seminar, believe in yourself and you know, why work for someone else when you could do this yourself. So I went home, quit my job and I started my own advertising agency, did that for about five or six years. And then I went by accident to us. Uh, his name is James Malinchak. He was teaching people how to become a speaker. And I sat there going, oh my gosh, I think I can do this. I have some pretty cool stories. And um, I became a speaker that day in 2006. And the rest, as they say, is history. I, I am uh, now a pretty well-known speaker. I get booked a lot as a keynote speaker for corporations. And I put on my own events of which Christine has been to many of them. Yes. She has spoken on my stage. She is our podcast expert when, yes. uh, when I do my events. And she literally, you know, started a business um, right there, right in front of my eyes. Uh, she was working at KPFK. And, uh, and she, oh my God, she did so much for my business uh, during the fundraisers. So I am eternally grateful to Christine. Oh, and um, and uh, we just, since then, I had a great relationship. But I've been speaking for the last, I don't know, 16 years. 
Um, and uh, I had the brand Rockstar Marketing. I switched everything to Rock Your Life. It's a long story, but it's a trademark idea uh, situation. So I couldn't trademark Rockstar Marketing because Rockstar Energy Drink, Rockstar other things were coming after me, cease and desist. Because right. they were just like, you're getting too big. You can't, you can't have Rockstar Marketing. So I switched everything to Rock Your Life because I do believe uh, it's, it's still a business brand helping businesses. But if you don't have your life together as well, then your business is going to be successful. So everything I do is rock your life right now. I do rock your life TV. There's my little thing behind me. And uh, I teach basically entrepreneurs how to be rock stars in their business. And this is where this is your yeah, this is your magical potion gift as well, because, you know, and the show. OK, so this show is called Out of the Box with Christine. And I yeah, like to, I like out of the box um, thinking and, and, and ingenuity and creativity. And that's what uh, struck me when I first met you. I was like, this guy has some great ideas for marketing and branding and promoting your business or whatever businesses that you have, if you're yeah, an author, yeah. if you're a coach or a consultant. And even, so, even a retail business, even small even, business. Ex yeah, exactly. Anything. Because yeah. you because you think outside the box, you 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 I come away with when I come to uh, an event with uh, when Greg uh, is when Craig is speaking and uh, I'm just like blown away at the nuggets of wisdom that you have. And it's like uh -huh. you're like rapid fire. You could do this. And then what about this? And then boom, boom, boom. And you're like I speak very fast. <laughs> you see people in the audience are taking notes like very furiously. Um, I love the one that you it was. Uh, oh, I love the stamp story. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a. Did you few talk about? Ones. Did you talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. that? Because I think that's a brilliant. Here's a tip for just pay attention, everybody, because this is actually <laughs> a brilliant little tip. So there's a. Let me see if I even have that here in my little. Oh, I think I put it in the garage. I don't have it. So anyway, um, I, uh, I, I, when I like, if, if I'm trying to get someone to either like a YouTube influencer or something or a podcaster to, I have a new book and I want them to review my book because I want them to talk about it on their podcast or their, their show or wherever, or their blog or whatever. I send them a book in a manila envelope, a regular envelope. Now, most people will put a, you know, a 58 cent stamp on the corner, or they'll just get a meter on the, on the corner of the envelope and mail the manila envelope with the book in it. And then I put a little letter in there. Hey, I'm, I'm interested in uh, you either reviewing the book, or I think you would be a great sponsor for my next event, whatever it is. But to get, to get them, to get my package to stand out, instead of, now this takes a little time and it takes a little, um, it drives you crazy. But instead of getting one 58 cent stamp, I get 58 one cent stamps. And I put them all over the envelope and I make smiley faces with the stamps. I don't have it in front of me, but I wish I had it. So I make smiley faces with all the stamps. So the person that's receiving it, this little piece of, mail is standing out first of all they're like oh my gosh this person had way too much time on their hands what are they doing but they they're interested to see what's inside so they'll actually open it see it's a book and it's a letter usually with the book explaining why i sent it to them and what i would like to do for them another thing i do because i have a podcast called rock your life tv is i invite them to be on my podcast it's hard for them to turn it down because I have a lot of listeners on my podcast and I tell them that I want to promote you so then maybe you'll review my book on your thing. So I do that all day long. But I think what Christine is talking about yes. is the hemp where you could go to stamps.com and for a couple of cents more per stamp, you could take your picture and put it on a stamp, like a 58 cent stamp with your picture on it. So I was on the reunion committee of my 40th. I know you're going to shocked that I am at my 40th <laughs> high school reunion. <laughs> but uh, I was on the mailing committee because I wanted to mail everybody their invitation to my 40th high school reunion. And I put my stamp picture as the stamp and I sent it out to everyone in my class. So when I went to the reunion, everybody came up to me and said, dude, how did you get your picture on a stamp? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm a speaker and they asked I'm really me. really famous. I'm really famous. They don't know that anyone could do this. Seriously, 
nobody knows this, except if you're in our little outside the box world that you could do something like that, right? I mean, that, and I know. So I, so there's that, but then this is what really blows people away. If you're trying to get a client or someone, or you're trying to get somebody that you really want to impress, you then go to Facebook or whatever, grab their image, put their image on a stamp, and then mail them something that you want them to open, and they're going to see their face on a stamp. And if you put your phone number in there, either on the return address or inside the envelope, you better believe they're going to call you and say, wait a minute, how did I get on a stamp? And I'm like, I don't know, you just... I don't know, I just bought some stamps and your face was on it. And it blows them away. And then I tell them the story and they're like, dude, that is insane. How do I get that? Well, and especially so when you say, plan. oh, hey, I'm happy to be like a marketing coach and, you know, branding. Right. And they're like, you're hired. Yeah, that's happened before. It has. Well, and it's just, it's getting the attention. And again, it's thinking outside of the box yeah. instead of just doing yeah. the normal thing, right? The, like no, everyone else. Like everybody Everyone's else. Everyone's going to be a leader a meter or a 58 cent stamp everybody right that's yeah. what they do yeah so don't okay. do that and then i have another one uh for envelopes like you know yeah. a typical business 10 and white envelope uh i do this to this day i i i do this a lot i mail out regular envelopes and i if i want to connect with somebody for any reason at all i just want to connect with that person because they could either be a sponsor once again they could be an influencer that I want to meet and I want to be on their podcast or something like that, I mail them an envelope and I put their name on it. And in the return address, I put my return address and under the return address, I put my telephone number. So I lick the envelope and I mail it. <coughs> Excuse me. I lick the envelope and I mail the envelope. They open the envelope and nothing is in the envelope. And curiosity is killing them like, oh my God, what did Oh, Craig Doeswell, what did he send me? I don't even know who this guy is. Oh, good. He left his telephone number on the return address. Let me call him. Hey, Craig, my name is John Smith, and I just got this envelope from you, uh, but nothing was inside. What was inside? And I say, well, nothing was inside, really. I just wanted you to call me because I, I have this opportunity. That, uh, and one of two things happened. One, they get mad and they say, Dude, you can't do that. I'm like, dude, you called me. I didn't call you. Right. So I don't know what you're getting mad at. Or number two is they say what you just said before. Wow, that was really cool because I hate cold calling. So I figured I would have you call me if you were interested. And now we can talk. And it's just a great way to open the, oh, open the channel of conversation. You know? It's so brilliant because also a lot of us, we don't get that much mail anymore you know, like mail, right, mail. Right. And so the, the thing is that when we do get mail, we think it's either, well, it's either a bill or maybe it's a check. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. They were probably thinking, right. Right. oh my gosh, I got a check and I, I, I need to know what this is. I need to. <laughs> what if it's a check, right? Exactly. exactly. I got to know where's my check. Well, oh my gosh. I, that is so brilliant. That was just, just worth those. Those are, those oh, are tips that are okay. worth gold. Yeah. So that's what I do in my seminars. I give a bunch of those out and and uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. People, I love watching the light bulbs go off in the audience going, oh my God, wow, okay, I'm going to do that. Or what happens is a lot of times, because some of them I have that are really crazy, that they go, okay, I'm not going to do that because Craig, you're nuts. Like I, I send Volkswagen doors uh, via messengers to people that I want to meet. Like I actually go to junkyards and buy Volkswagen doors and uh, in fact, I think I saw your Volkswagen there recently. Yes, no. yes, you probably did. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, but people will go, all right, I'm not going to do that. But it gets them to say, all right, Start I need to think a little bit differently like that guy does instead of being like everybody else. And that's what the whole premise is. Just think differently like you do. Think outside the box. Just, just do things differently. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the same thing is like when uh, what I tell people, if they if they're if they want to get booked on a on a podcast show or on a radio show first of all i always say listen to the damn radio show or podcast Before. show don't yeah, yeah. yeah listen to at least listen to one episode i hate <laughs> it when people just say hey i want to be on your show and they know nothing about me they just go <laughs> well i'll just throw this out there um <laughs> but but what i what i say is this, instead of sending an email because every you know we get emails i get oh, junk yeah. email 
and yeah. LinkedIn is the LinkedIn to me is the I don't know. Some people love it. I loathe it. I do not. I do not like LinkedIn because anytime somebody says, "Oh, I want to connect. I want to be your friend," whatever, and I say, "Okay," they immediately pitch me something. Oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. Right I can make you a million dollars or whatever. It's like, go away. You're not a friend. Wait, anyway. Do you find, because you have a podcast, do you find that most of them are pitching some sort of podcast thing? No, most of them are pitching their six figure program, their coaching program. Oh. <laughs> I'm a coach for coaches. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a six figure coach for coaches and I can coach I you on the coaching coach, coach, coach. And I'm like, shut up. So, <laughs> so, but the thing is, is that what, um, and being a radio producer for so many years, 20 years, whatever, I would get emails and, and it'd be like, hi, I want, I, I need to be on the show. <laughs> First of all, I'm like, oh, really? Pardon me. Uh, maybe not. And it's this long email. I, 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 me, me, me. This is what yeah, I do. This is what I do. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, your listeners are going to love me because it's me, 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 me. And I'm just like, delete, delete, delete. Yeah. Um, and, and so what I tell my clients, my, my coaching clients is that if you want to get on a podcast or a radio show, again, first of all, listen, if you can listen to a couple episodes, listen to the, the person a little bit so that you know something about them before yeah. you ask them, you know, I don't expect somebody, a stranger to walk up to me on the street and say, give me $10 right now, right. somebody who knows me, and says, I love you so much, Christine, and you're wonderful, and you've been a good friend. Hey, I'm really low today. Can, can I borrow yeah. 10 bucks? Fine, fine. So Absolutely. what I say is, in dear, you know, get to know them a little bit. And instead of writing an email that is 10 miles long, boring as, I say, as you've got a little film crew in your pocket here. You've got a phone. Yeah. These phones are like a film crew. It's technology yes. at its finest. So yeah. I said, just do just like a like a TikTok or a or a or a reel. Do a fifteen second uh, little video on your phone. Talk to the person. You know, video re record yourself talking to the person. Hey, hey, Craig. Um, hey, Craig. It's Christine Blasdell. I am a podcast coach and motivational speaker, and I know that you're going to want me on your stage because blah 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 blah. Right? right. Whatever yeah. the whatever the reason is, yeah, I need yeah. I need to be on your show because of blah blah blah. Yeah then send it to them. The thing is, is that when we see people's eyes yes, and we feel them and we hear them and we can see them immediately, there's that potential for us to connect and to be relatable. Yep. Yep. If, if, if I'm just, if I'm Christine Blasdale and it's just a bunch of words in an email, that's not that powerful. Yeah. But if they see you in action or you send them a video of you actually doing your thing, right? then your chances of, of impressing that person are far more. And even if you're talking about someone about a, a show or an, a, a podcast, even say, you know what? Your interview that you did with Craig Doswalt was amazing. And right. Recall something that just yeah. happened on your show. Absolutely. Exactly. I love when you did that interview with Craig Doswalt, you asked him this question. Oh my gosh, you're so good at this. Talk about the person a little bit that is running the show that you want to get on. You know, it's, it, 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 that is key. You know, that's why I only like doing live events. Uh, 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 you know, you ever watch a theater production, like a TV version of a theater production is horrible. It is horrible. So uh, everyone always says, can you film your um, event and then watch it? And I'll watch it at, from my house. And I say, no, because the energy is totally different when you're in the room. And it's back to what you said, the eyes and connecting with someone, connecting with their energy. That's why I think live events are so important. And thank goodness they have come back. That's all I can say. Thank goodness. You know? <laughs> well, and you know what? It's, it's um, like we, we were saying, it's, there's an explosion of creativity and people creating their own business. Mm -hmm. And now is a really good time. Um, well, it's an excellent time to, to do it. Um, and I've noticed, and I'm sure within your masterminds and groups too, an explosion of female entrepreneurs, oh. like, oh. And not, and not their, not, not people that are in their twenties and thirties. We're talking oh. 50, 60, 50. 70. Yep. 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 Talk about that. So I am, um, so I, I run these rock your life conferences that Christine's been to and, um, my audience 
it's funny. I'm 60 years old. I know. I know you don't believe me. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I, was, I just turned 60. And, um, um, and I find my audience is probably 35 to 70. I also find out my audience is, I'd say, 70% women. And, and, I, and, I, and I speak a lot at women conferences. So I say to myself, like, I, I, don't, I don't consciously say, oh, I have to attract women to my audiences. It just kind of happens. And I don't know if I have this sensitive side or whatever it is, but for some reason, I attract women to my conferences. And I think it's because, you know, they are, women are way more creative than men. They just are. Men are taught, you do a job, and you do whatever. Women think outside the box. They want to do things differently. They want to make a difference in this world. And I think they're just starting to realize in the last few years, like, I'm, I'm going to take over the world. Also, a lot of people, like their husbands are retiring, and now they got to live with their husband by themselves. And they're like, and the kids are out of the house. And they're like, I don't want to be with that guy all day. I want to go out and do something different. So they, they um, go to these seminars to try to find what they're going to do in their second half of their life. And because they're so creative, they, um, they are thriving right now. I always say, I wish I was a woman doing, because I'd be invited to more women conferences because they get a lot of women speakers. All right, so I run these Rocky Life conferences and now I'm partnering with this guy, Ken Walls, and he's a great live streamer and he knows a lot of technical stuff. And we, had, we have an event coming up. Um, it's called Turn It Up. It's a retreat. It's a four-day retreat plus a mastermind after that. We were trying to get speakers for this retreat, really high-end speakers, and by accident, totally by accident, we got four great men. We have no women speakers. We tried to get these women, like really high-end people, like, like the CEO of Mary Kay type thing. They just couldn't do it those dates. But it's funny because most of the people coming to this event are women, but they're all asking us, why are there only men speakers? And we're like, no, we didn't mean to do that. It was an accident, but it's, but it's a real thing. So next one we're doing like in March or something next year, we're going to focus on like, well, we'll do this. We're only going to get women speakers because they need to relate to powerful women. And there's so many choices. We just we just had bad dates for the people that we were going after. Anyway, point is women entrepreneurs, that's the way to go. That is the future. There'll be a women president, women president very in the near future. And I just think the world is going towards that. It's not a, it's a great thing. I mean, women are amazing. My audience, like I said, great. They're just enthusiastic and they're excited about the possibilities in life. Yeah. Well, I think that they're at that age, like I would say the majority, most of my clients, most of my private coaching clients are, well, they're definitely women. I 99.9% yeah. .9 are women. Right. Um, and, and, and women of, you know, w women that are fifties, uh, late fifties, sixties, seventies. I've got quite a few clients that are in their seventies. I've even got yeah. someone who's in their early eighties. Yeah. And, and what it is, is that they are, and, and I'm and I'm speaking for someone as someone who's close to 58 myself. I'm almost 58. Um, we reach a point in our lives too where we know what we want, and yes. we know what we don't want. Don't want, exactly. and we don't, and we don't have to pretend like, oh, that sounds great. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. No, we're like, as you get a little bit older, you're like, no, I don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah, but we, and they, yeah, good. But, but we have like this, um, we have this expertise and wisdom to share and yes. whereas before it was like you know what you're not productive anymore you know you can just like just retire and just go away now okay. we're like oh are you kidding me now i've got all this energy all this mind creativity yeah. and i want to share it and that's what i find uh, with my clients are women that want to share their gift they want to help people they want to mm -hmm. make the world a better place they want to leave a legacy and yeah. so that's where I see that explosion of creativity. What were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, it's, it's that second. Um, I just spoke with a, a client of mine, and she's 72 years old. And her, she wants to coach 
men and women, but it's mainly probably going to be women that are 50 to 75, that the kids are out of the house, they're empty nesters. What am I going to do now? Like my, my whole life has been my kids and growing up and, and taking care of my husband and if they weren't working, right? But now like that's all done. Their job as a mom for the most part or a spouse is pretty much done. Now, what am I going to do for myself? I, like you just said, yeah. I have yeah. all this wisdom that I've been bottling up for yeah. 15 <laughs> years and I just want to share uh, I think her brand is your second purpose. Your second nice. purpose. I love that. And um, her name is Marilyn Hines. A shout out to Marilyn. And, um, and I just literally had a coaching call with her. And she is going to specific. I said, if you could niche this down, she's going to help healthcare professionals and first responders to, that have retired that remember they've been giving back their whole lives and it just stopped one day and they just want to give back, but they don't know what to do now. And she's going to help them figure out how to give back in their second purpose of life. And I just think that's where we're going. Like <laughs> what they say, like 70 is the new uh, 40 is the, no 70 is the new 40 or yeah. 60 is the new 30, you know? And it's true because I remember my grandparents when they were 60 years old, they were 60 years old and they like, <laughs> They, they were just like drinking beer on the porch and their bellies out to here and wearing t-shirts. And I'm 60 years old. I'm as vibrant as ever. And I think that's where we're going. We live longer. And I think, man, 50 to 75 right now, great, great, great um, group of people. And especially women that want to make a difference in this world. And that it's a great audience. And, and man, smart I mean, and smart. as. Oh, yeah. I Oh, yeah. I have I have one I have a, a podcast coaching client who's 75 years old. Um, she's a master teacher in her own right, master healer, right? And beautiful soul, beautiful, beautiful soul. And she um she always wanted to have a podcast, but she didn't, she was like, I don't want to hire a podcast manager and a producer and the thing, and ah, and she's <laughs> like, she's like, I just really want to, I want to learn how to do it. And I said, Well, I'll show you how to do it, I'll teach yeah. you how to do it. And the easy, fun way is this is another master trick. Yeah. If you're a coach or a consultant, when you can teach people how to do something easy and simply and have fun, the 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 memory, the cortex is in the brain of the accomplishing it and getting it in, in really getting it um, yeah. is much faster. Right. Your, your yeah. learning curve yeah. is much faster. Yeah. So yeah. I worked with her. I did a, a four week um, coaching program with her. Yeah. And this woman, 75 years old, is rocking the podcast world. She's got a podcast on Apple, Spotify, a YouTube channel. She's interviewed um, Pat Benatar. She's had over wow. 50. By now, she's probably got like 60 episodes. She's wow. she's publishing more more podcast episodes than I am, you know, like <laughs> at a rate, you know, like she's like every yeah. week she's got a new show out. I'm like, what are you what are you made out of? You know, and she's <laughs> had a hard time. She said. You know, she's had COVID. She's had uh, some surgery. This is like, this is like an animal. This is like, you know, yeah. she um, and she has guests on and she it's not about her. The show's not about her. It's yeah. about these other masterful, wonderful people in their own right and shining yeah. a light on them. Um, yeah. So I just I'm like it, I'm I got goosebumps right now because right. I'm so and, excited. And that's, that's how you meet people and grow your business by accident really you're yeah. trying all you're doing is getting a guest featuring them sharing their expertise to your audience which makes you look like a rock star because you brought them yeah. and and whatever business you're running even if it's just you no know, teaching people like how to do a podcast or whatever that person is actually teaching and she might not be teaching anything but if she has a youtube here's here's a great thing if she gets her numbers up by just doing a show featuring other people, not talking about anything that she does. She has no business, no, no website, no nothing, but she puts her videos, her interviews up on YouTube and she starts getting like a thousand people watching these, YouTube is gonna pay her. So she doesn't even have a business, I'm not saying that she doesn't, but you don't even have to have a business. All you have to do is promote people, 
do it out of your house. Mine's in my house. I'm in my house right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, yeah. and it's, this is totally free. I bought a microphone. I put a cool thing behind my head, put some cool guitars behind me. I got some nutcrackers, uh, Kansas City Chief and a TCU thing, you know, whatever. And I do it out of my house for free. And uh, and YouTube will pay you if you get uh, enough people. You can become a YouTube influencer just by doing this without a business. And that's the beauty of what we're doing now. Uh, you know, this lady, how old is she again? 70, 75. 75 years old. So she's probably doesn't have a full-time job. And she's just, you know, has all the time in the world and said, you know, I have all these connections and I have all this wisdom. I'm just going to interview people. And that's, no, that's she, well, you know, she has a working, she's, she's actually, she's a, a healer. She's a Reiki master. Oh, okay. so she does have a she's business. a Reiki master and she has, oh, okay. she, she is still uh, working very vibrant, you know, I love uh, it. Yeah. I, I, oh yeah. She's fierce. Like I said, she's just, uh, and she's from Brooklyn. So she's got that Brooklyn. Oh, accent. my hometown. Yeah. Well, I'm from Queens. Queens, I just love know. that. I love that. So I'll yeah. give a shout out to her. Barbara Saban. Hello, Barbara. I love you. I love oh, you. There I love you. you go. Um, <laughs> So we got we've got a little bit of time left um, and I wanted to um, I wanted to throw out. Well, first of all, if people are interested in finding out more about you, um, yeah. let's throw out that website. And I'll throw it out again at the end. But um, okay. what's the best place to, to learn about you? So and, and about me that has everything is Craig And I know that's hard to spell, but Christine will put it out. I'll put thing. it on the screen. Yeah. Right. C R A I G D U S W A L T dot com, or just Google Rock Your Life. I probably come up. But yeah, that's the main website. And my events are rockyourlifeconference.com. And then I have the other one is the high end conference, turn it up mm.com for mastermind. Turn it up mm.com. So I have three areas that you could go to. One is for a keynote speaking to book me. Craig does rockstar rock star rock your life conference is my conferences turn it up mm.com is where we do really high-end retreats and conferences but you know i and, and i always say this when you're coming up with a brand for yourself i'm a speaker that's what i do i'm a speaker first and then all the other things that i do coaching mastermind is a byproduct of speaking i always tell people figure out what you are first are you an author? Are you a speaker? Are you a coach? Are you a consultant? Do you own a small business? Whatever that is, promote that first and all the other stuff will just, you know, people try to promote eight things at the same time. And then you're like, you overwhelm people and you're not the, you're the jack of all trades, master of none. So I promote myself as a speaker first and, and then a podcast guy. An awesome speaker, <laughs> podcast guy. Let's, okay, so let's go for the, for the folks that are, um, uh, they've got a, a business. Uh, maybe it's an online business. Maybe they are, a, they're thinking about being a coach or they are a coach or a consultant, um, a service provider of some sort. Um, yeah. Let's throw out rapid fire. Let's um, some top tips that you want to, I'll, I'll start it off and then you go. Okay. Okay. Top tip. You go girl. Top tip. You need okay. a, if you don't have a website, you need a, at least a one page. Uh, you, you need some kind of web presence where people can find out more about you and when you do um when you do uh guests on a show or you're quoted in a magazine or something you have a website so that people can find out more about you and then that said uh the second thing is you need to create a media one sheet so that you can get on television and radio and and podcasts and all you have to do is send out that pdf of that media one sheet beautiful headshot make sure that it's a recent shot and not a selfie make sure it's I professional have a recent shot. I make sure it's a <laughs> make sure it's a professional photo of you like in the last you know decade let's make sure it's kind of recent um and then all of your praises all of the good stuff about you on yeah. that media one sheet okay now you throw out some tips uh, okay love website love one sheet those are the two things you definitely have to have so I have this new thing, you know, I never hand out business cards. I hate business cards because they're in here and I never look at them. I get them from people and then I throw them in this drawer that's filled with business cards and I'm never going to see them again. So I have uh, this little thing. It's actually made of metal. It's like hard as a rock and it's craigsbizcard.com. It's actually another kind of website, but it's on a mobile thing, craigsbizcard.com. And what it is, is just everything that you have is on like one scroll down page, but it's 
more from mobile. So if anyone wants to, like if you were to go to craigsbizcard.com, you can, if you want, have me text you back. You can go to a website, you can go anywhere. So I don't like handing out these cards. I like digital business cards and they, they, there's a QR code on the back of it. They I've got one. Oh, you got, is it metal? It's metal. Yeah, me too. It's metal. One. This one's on a lanyard so that I, oh, if I go to an event. Cool. Yeah, but it's got I the, the key. Yeah, so you yeah. just tap, you just tap yeah. your, your tap card on someone's yeah. phone and it, and it comes up with all of your information on there. Yeah, yeah they're Love brilliant. Those. Love those. And you impress uh, people and, that way too, don't you, Craig? I know. They go, oh, First that's of all, they so fancy. It. They're like, <laughs> it's so fancy. It's so fancy. So I, I do that all the time now. I never hand out regular business cards because Christine and I, we're outside the box thing because we don't that's right. regular. All right. And then my second one is um, you, you need to do a, a live podcast. And, and you have the person sitting right in front of you to teach you how to do that. Uh, and she ran it at radio stations, big radio stations in LA, pretty big city. So you need to do a podcast and it would be better. A lot of people, when we said podcast way back in the day, it was just audio, but you got to do audio and video, kill two birds with one stone, because once again, people want to see you. Now, I, I know Christine's doing a show right now on a radio station for Pacifica, but also on top, I mean, we're not we're not going to all be Christine that you get a one hour show on a radio station, but you can have a podcast. My podcasts are 10 minutes max, five to 10 minutes, because people don't have the bandwidth usually to listen for a period of time. So I'd rather have a bunch of small podcasts give exactly what they need to do in five to 10 minutes and have a bunch of them and then call out exactly what they're going to learn on the podcast. So it's a Rock Your Life TV is five to 10 minute podcast, really quick information. You could do it for free in your house, put something behind you that brands you all the time while people are watching. You can do it on StreamYard. You can do it on Zoom. There's lots of platforms to do it on. Okay. Those are my two now. That's And, the, and that's one of my, like with, with new uh, clients and they go, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do an hour long. And I go, no, don't. <laughs> Oh, Christine, you did something. Five, five to 10 minutes is a great length. No, no, we, you, did, you right? did something genius. I saw recently the micro something. What was the that? micro podcast on podcast? Yes. 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 So the micro podcast is five minutes or less. And that's micro. Yes. That's tiny. But there's steps or tips. So each episode is a tip or a, 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 five minutes is a long time when you're talking about what yes. kind of what kind of microphone you should get to be a professional yeah. host. Right. Yeah, yep. so those are the, it's called the micro podcast on podcasting, and I do love those because they're short, and I've got a music bed underneath them. And yes, our attention and span you know what's has, so good about those? has eroded. You know what's so good about those? Hmm. I will watch that because listen, if I want to know if I'm doing a podcast and I want to know what microphone to buy, I don't want to watch a 15 minute podcast and I got to wait. What are they going to do? An introduction, and then and they're going to talk about some other. No, just tell me in one minute to two minutes the microphone to buy and yes. tell me why I should buy it. I would, I'd rather have a hundred shows like that where I, I would just scroll down and go, Oh, that's the one. How to buy what microphone to buy for a podcast. Click on that. And it tells me within two minutes what I buy. That's gold, gold. Yes. You need those things. And you need, especially when you're first starting out, because one of the, one of the episodes is like to have a co-host or not. And I usually on, on, because I've dealt with a lot of people who have had co-hosts and I'm, my, I say, if you can do it by yourself, do it because you own the copyright, you own everything and you know if you're going to show up or not. A lot yeah. of times people start off if in it, it could be a married couple, could be friends, right? Let's have a podcast. Let's do a podcast. And then one person ends up doing all the work uh, and then legally That's all the fun. stuff that can come. Yeah. I'm like, just just do it yourself if you yeah, can just do it yourself. and have special guests come on, you know, always do it by yourself and then just invite other yes, people on. I exactly. agree so you have control. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. time is ticking by so fast. Okay, um, we we have time for one more. Well, I you can let, let people let people know um what that one more thing is, and then also okay. um again how they can uh, reach you, Donna. Okay, so my last one is you got to write a book. Everyone needs to write a book. One of yes, 
So right, I write. I have a thing: how to write a book in thirty days. You and Susie Pruden are doing great stuff with her writing program. She does those itty bitty books, which are amazing. Um, shout out to Susie. Um, all right, so everyone needs to write a book. I, uh, along the lines of what like Su Susie does, the itty bitty books. I'm working with uh, Ken Walls, and he has these um, journals that he does as well. You could put your brand on a journal right? Your brand, have one or two pages about what you do or something like quick thing, but have it in journal form. And you go to Amazon and you could print them in one day and they cost like $2 and you just sell them for $10, but it has your brand in it. One or two pages. And then a bunch of blank pages, maybe with a back, a screen back picture of your yeah. logo or something yeah, those on the pages, Amazon, you could print those in a day for like $2 each. Uh, and we're doing this whole thing at my event next event. Come to one of my events. We'll show you how to do it. I want to do a journal. I know. I'll show you how to do it. Okay. I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. I love Easy. you, Craig Doswell. I love you, Christine Blasdell. I'm so happy to I have you back on. I wish I could give you a hug. I know. You are. You're the best hugger as well. I'm a hugger. You're I'm a good a hugger. hugger. Um, what we'll do here, we'll do a hug. Uh, via Zoom. Okay. Um, uh, Craig does well. You are just amazing, and, and I'm so happy that you um, and you've helped also raise a lot of money for Pacifica Radio as well. I want the audience to know. And for those of you who are like, what is she talking about? Um, Out of the Box with Christine is available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, uh, Pandora, you name it, all those podcast hosting platforms. It's also available on YouTube. And now it's available on Pacifica Radio. So, um, it, which is a gorgeous, there's a KPFK is in Los Angeles. It's, um, it's an amazing radio station. And Craig has helped raise quite a bit of money for, for the I station. I love so, KPFK listeners. I love and, KPFK listeners. And we love you. So, um, if folks, if you want to find out more, of course, uh, the, the, the two main websites is craigduswalt.com and rockyourlifeconference.com. I'll make sure in the show notes I have links to uh to, to all of those and um if you want more information about this podcast go to out of the box with christine.com sorry it's a long url it's what it is um and if you want more information about me just go to my name christine blasdale.com until next time as i always say remember to think outside that damn box bye for now <laughs>